one of the most important things you need to look at in your soil is potassium. But it's also sodium and it's also hydrogen. Well, you know what? There is a test you can run that will show you the ratio of one nutrient to the others and also calcium magnesium. This is called the base saturation test. We want to explain just part of this base saturation test today and why it's so important for your farm. When you're running soil tests on your farm this fall or, or any time that you're running soil tests, one of the tests that you should be requesting is the base saturation test. Now at some labs, it's on their base package uh, when you just say, hey, I'm sending in a soil sample, give me some results. They'll include that base saturation because they see it's so important. They don't even want to give you a choice of if you should have it on there or not. Other labs, you have to specifically ask for base saturation to make sure that they include it. So why is this so important and what is it a measure of? When we look at, at the base saturation on a soil, we're looking at the positively charged nutrients that are hooking up to the soil colloids. Now with soil, it has a negative electrical charge. So positively charged nutrients are going to attract to it. Things like the potassium, like the sodium, like the hydrogen that we were talking about. So when you're looking at the base saturation test, what you're seeing is a ratio of these positively charged nutrients or which percentage of the binding sites on the soil colloids are held by each of the nutrients. So next week on the show, we'll talk about calcium and magnesium. Those are two really big components of this base saturation. But today we want to focus on potassium, sodium, and hydrogen. Well, to begin with, with sodium, what we're looking for is we want that to be less than 1%. What we're talking about here is not necessarily parts per million, okay? Because sometimes people say, well, if you have below this many parts per million, you're fine. Well, not necessarily. We're looking at as a total percentage in the soil, if sodium is less than 1% of these five nutrients, then we're usually in pretty good shape. When we see that sodium level climb above 1%, what that very often means is we have too much sodium in the soil, and it, when we start getting up to really high levels, let's say 8 or 10 or 15% sodium, we've got sodic soils, that's bad. Just remember, sodium uh, ends up becoming salt, and salt kills soil. Salt kills microbes, salt kills plants. Salt is one of the worst things you can possibly have in the soil, and you know it's hard for us as human beings to really you know understand that sometimes because what do we do we put salt on just about everything we eat well a little bit of salt is fine but you start getting very much salt at all and it's a really bad deal so keep the sodium less than one percent one other nutrient we want to keep in relatively low concentrations in the soil is hydrogen and i realize you may be saying hydrogen well that's part of water we definitely need to have some h2o out there yes we do but when we're looking at base saturation and how much free hydrogen is actually attached to our soil colloids, that's an indication of how much acidity there is in the soil. If you've ever looked at the chemical formulas for sulfuric acid, for example, the first thing you see on there is H2 and then SO4. Well, the SO4 is your, your sulfur and your H2 is the hydrogen, and that's the acid portion. So when we're looking at soils, when we get high levels of hydrogen in our soil, especially when they get above 10% on a base saturation test, we've got an acidic soil that we need to fix. Now it's an easy fix, just adding lime to a soil can take care of this. There's a chemical reaction that happens when you add lime, which is calcium carbonate, to a soil that has lots of free hydrogen. Well, the hydrogen binds with one of the oxygens in the carbonate and makes water. So we can get rid of excess hydrogen fairly easy, the big thing though is for all the soil microbes to work and for good nutrient availability within your soil, you have to keep that base saturation hydrogen less than 10%. One quick thing too with hydrogen, it can actually get to zero and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but in most crops, we'd like to see that soil pH in the 6.3 to 6.8 range. So we want a little bit of hydrogen. When your soil pH reaches seven and above, there is zero for a percentage of hydrogen out in that field. So it's nothing to get too alarmed about, but when you see a zero for hydrogen, that's going to tell you that your pH is seven or above. Well, I don't know of too many farming situations where I see people adding lots of sodium on purpose or adding lots of hydrogen on purpose, uh, other than watering their crops. But I do know of almost every situation where farmers are focused on potassium. So potassium in the base saturation test is a real critical thing. The question is, uh, when we're looking at soil tests, do we look at parts per million? Do we look at base saturation? And what levels are we targeting for our crops? 
All right, you can sure look at parts per million, and that's fine if you've got a really light soil. But in most cases, we're just focused on that base saturation test. We want to see, for most crops, this is not all crops, but for most crops, we want to see 4% to 8% base saturation K. If you're in that range, you're usually in pretty good shape. One of the problems in a lot of the Midwest is you'll see 1%, 1.5%, maybe 2% base saturation K. That's a real problem. And then what that leads to, when you don't have enough K in the soil, you've got more lodging problems, you have uh, just overall stock quality issues, grain quality issues, you see more disease, you just have more overall problems with that crop, and you're disappointed in yield. So this is one of the big things we've been doing on our own farm is trying to work that soil test base saturation K up over 4%. And to be quite honest with you, we're at 4% now in a lot of our fields and we're now going for the next level. We've gotten some really good yields. Now I want really great yields. So now we're going to start our progression moving up to 6% base saturation K. You just don't want to get over 8%. Once you start getting over 8%, then that actually can be a limiting factor too. You have problems with other nutrients, a number of other issues. So 4 to 8%, like for corn, soybeans, and wheat, that's the ideal range we're shooting for with potassium. The real key with base saturation is we want to see plenty of it out there because there are points in a crop's life where it has to have rapid growth and it needs to be able to pull lots of potassium quickly. Yep. That's why this ratio is so critical to look at. Yeah, and actually soybeans might need more than corn on any given day late in the summer. Okay, so the big question we get is, all right, my base saturation K is too low. How do I raise it up? Well, the only way you raise it up is putting on more potassium. In our own operation, we put potassium on in a number of different ways, whether it's manure, potash, liquid potassium. I mean, there are a lot of things you can do, but just understand it's going to take a lot of pounds in many cases to raise a base saturation one or two or three points. Well, fertility is certainly critical if you want to reach high yields and profitability on your farm, but so is weed control. That's absolutely critical that you stop this week's Weed of the Week. We'll show you how later in the show.